You were at the office of rants, which is where for $5, I will rant about a topic of your choice. Click the link in the description to request a rant. This one comes from Shattered Leo. Rant about video game remakes and why the original games always get downplayed slash disregarded whenever a remake drops. So I want to say that with other mediums, other than games, film, music, animation, whatever, there, there tends to be more skepticism toward uh, remakes or adaptations of some kind. Skepticism that you don't really have with video games for the most part, I want to I argue. Why is that? I, I want to boil it down to largely two reasons. The first one I think is a little less obvious. And that's the fact that video games are real time rendered. What do, I, what do I mean by that? So with, with film and music, for example, I think, I think there it's really obvious that to some extent you are capturing reality. At least when we look at the like super origin points of those mediums, you're using some kind of device, uh, a video recorder, uh, an audio recorder to capture sounds, to capture... Um, you know, the visual experience. And then that capture technology has its limitations, obviously, through the ages. But in general, the level of fidelity that you expect in a film or in a song is that standard is set by reality itself, right? <laughs> what if like what I look like in a film um, you can you can mostly expect that to be captured on film regardless of the technology they use, even if it's black and white and really shitty resolution or something. Or really, like, Charlie Chaplin, fast frame rate. You can still recognize that it's a human and then maybe the quirks you even perceive it as a charming element. Now, with, with animation, maybe that's less the case. You're not capturing reality. You're, you're using techniques to to put your imagination on the screen you're using like, like pencil or using 3d animation or something like that um but even then all that stuff is completely offline right the you could you could imagine something like the original toy story where obviously back in the 90s they didn't have the most sophisticated sophisticated computers but they didn't really need to because they Theoretically speaking, they could just take as long as they wanted to render out a frame and then make it look as beautiful, beautiful as they wanted. In, in a video game that's not, obviously I'm being very simplistic, obviously there's still a progression in, in that technology. Obviously Toy Story uh, doesn't look nearly as good as we, what we have now in terms of animation generally, in terms of fidelity at least. But still in a video game, there was always a much harder limitation on the fact that, okay, the video game has to push out a frame in like 60 milliseconds. Obviously, the majority of the audience will not think about it on this technical level, but there is, I think, an implicit understanding of this hard ceiling that video games have. So when you look at something like the original Silent Hill 2, for example, which now, because of the remake, we see a lot of this, this discourse again. Oh, this needs a remake because it doesn't hold up. Again, there's this implicit awareness of the hard ceiling that something like the PlayStation 2 had, a device like the PlayStation 2. And then you're much more naturally inclined to consider that a flaw. Um, the other big reason and I think this one's much more obvious, it's just the interactivity. Because, <laughs> again, I'm gonna sound really stupid and obvious, but to progress the game, you actually have to interact with it. You can't just let it run like a film or like a song. So if you brush up against certain design tropes, certain quirks of the time that were common, that might not gel with your current sensibilities, that 
very obviously can lead to frustration. And then from a point of frustration, you're probably not thinking very rationally. You probably wanna make some kind of connection of, okay, I'm good. They just didn't figure it out. They hadn't figured it out yet. You know, they just didn't know better at that point. And that's why old game bad, blah. Um, and I want to say that both of those sort of perspectives, like thinking about those limitations and then, you know, all that shit, it's not a very artistic way to look at art. It's not a very useful way to look at art for the most part, in my opinion. But it is very, very common, and you do kind of, I mean, like I said, I, 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 laid it, I laid out the causal chain for why this happens just now, and yet it's still really disappointing that with, um, even with a game like Resident Evil 4, which is such a widely fucking acclaimed game where, like, so much content has been made about it and how intelligently it was designed, and yet you will you will still get the official fucking IGN review for the remake. Dismiss it in like half a paragraph. And um, you know, there there's more to that. I think that kind of dismissal is much more common in the enthusiast sphere. Or sorry, no, I said enthusiast is not the right word. Um, it's much more common in the mainstream professional kind of sphere where all they do is follow current games. And there's so many flaws with that structure and that system. And the big one is just, well, okay, you're in this constant rat race of having to cover like a billion games a month. Obviously your sensibilities and your tastes are then largely informed by that. You never have time to really seriously go back and like, and analyze and internalize how older games kind of work, get used to them. You're always on a fucking schedule. So, on the one hand, it's frustrating and annoying and like sort of corny to read all that stuff. On the other hand, I get why it happens. I can't, like to some extent, I can't really blame him. But maybe, maybe at some point the realization should set in that, okay, video game journalist, not a good job. Not a, not a uh, outlet to productively articulate um, compelling thoughts on games.